The Nigerian Electric Electricity Regulatory Commission has issued permits to Golden Penny Power Limited, MTN Communications Nigeria Limited, Haven Hill Synergy, and other multinationals for mini grid electricity generation. The Commission said it issued nine new off grid generation licenses in the first quarter of 2024 with a gross capacity of 109.69 megawatts and three new trading licenses, Sweatco uh, Foods Limited, African Steel Mills Nigeria Limited, West African Ceramics Limited, Royal Engineered Stones Limited, and Armillo Plastics Limited. We are permitted to generate captive power. Captive power generation permits uh, are issued to uh, entities that aim to own and maintain power plants for generating power for consumption and not for sale to a third party. The Commission issued nine captive power generations. Section 165 of the Electricity Act 2023 permits the Commission to award license of mini-grade concessions to renewable energy companies to exclusively serve a specific geographical location indicating aggregate electricity to be generated and distributed from a site uh, with the obligation to serve customers. A permit is issued to uh, a mini-grid developer for the construction, operation, maintenance, and uh, where applicable ownership of mini-grids with distribution capacity above 100 kilowatts and generation capacity up to one megawatt. On this episode of the program, our guests shall be discussing the benefit and how to utilize the opportunity of keying into power generation via mini grid, among others. Welcome to another episode of Nigeria Today. I am Ikaria Clinton, and thanks for joining us. Joining us for the discussion is Uket Obunga, Executive Secretary, Power Consumers Advocates of Nigeria, and National Secretary, Network for Electricity Consumers Advocacy of Nigeria. It's good to have you in Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Also in the studio is uh, Bode Fadipe, he's the electricity and power expert. Glad to have you in Nigeria today. Thank you very much for having me viewers. No, uh, but yeah, just uh, I'll start with you. Uh, to begin with, uh, what does the granting of permits for mini grid electricity generation, you know, to private companies? What what does it mean? Uh, well, I, I think the, the 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 immediate implication is that the market is uh, continually being divested uh, because uh, that's also part of the original intention that you have more private equity being introduced and by so doing you have a multiplicity of players that are coming in uh, that is expected to in the long run be able to bring down costs uh, in terms of selling to the end user or consumer for whatever purpose it is intended for but i think it's important for us to very quickly highlight the presence of uh, a player like MTN, uh, by every standard of the evaluation, MTN is not a small entrant into the market. So what that, what that immediately tells us is that when the likes of MTN begin to show interest in the electricity market, it presupposes from the business perspective that the the utility of the market is becoming more and more visible i mean and it's interesting to observe that mtn is coming at a time when the tariff has experienced a substantial jump i know that uh, since the adjustment of the band a tariff i have had people calling me after some time to say can i go to band b <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the same people that clamored for constant electricity. Now that they are saying constant electricity, it's a case of affordability. Because availability and affordability are two different conversations entirely. So, 
when we begin to see the likes of MTN coming into the market, there is a ray of hope because no businessman will get into any business for Santa Claus purpose, what I call the Santa Claus syndrome. They want to make money. So MTN came to this country because they found opportunity to make money from telco. Now that they are seeing opportunity in the power sector, it means there's real food. But there are other, other, there are other implications mm. of okay. their entrance into the market. Now, before we go into the implications, I, I want to bring in Oket here. Uh, Oket, um, now, uh, this is part of the ongoing reforms in the power sector. Now, how would you uh, describe the reform thus far? Well, it is a welcome development. Mm. Like you said, uh, entities like uh, MTN, mm. Golden Penny Power uh, Limited, mm. uh, which I believe is owned by the Golden Penny uh, Flour Mills, that has, you know, branches in Lagos, Oyo, Ogun, and Calabar in Cross River, and I think somewhere in Kano. Their entrance is a welcome development. I see it from the perspective of, you see, the frustration, the frustration that uh, they go through uh, from um, the current monopolies, uh, you know, who are in the sector, the discos and so forth, and the Jenkins. Yes. It is a welcome development in the sense that um, uh, since the signing into law, of the 2003 Electricity Act, uh, which has, uh, you know, taken off the uh, giving states, local government and entities, you know, to generate, transmit and distribute electricity. I think it is a good development for the sector. Uh, because why I say so, because uh, you see, I have been involved I have uh, coordinated a national survey uh, uh, on the quality of electricity supply to Nigerians, funded by MacArthur Foundation and uh, NECAN, NECAN Next Year Power. And I went around the country and I had engagement with Manufacturers Association of Nigeria branches in various states, uh, the chambers of commerce and industry and individuals you need to hear the stories you need to hear the, the frustrations okay you know? uh, bef before we we'll go into uh, the the other stories yeah. i'll come back to uh, uh, body now you were about saying something about the implication however how are the entry of these uh, companies you know like the mtn you rightly mentioned the good in penny he mentioned and of course uh, the other multinationals you know how will they impact nigeria's overall electricity supply now so when you have multinationals like mtn coming in uh the big spenders as it, as it were mm. even though the totality of what they will be dealing with currently mm. is compared to what is required is grossly insignificant i mean it's less than 200 megawatts 100 megawatts. i mean it's even less than 150 <laughs> megawatts <laughs> even yeah. less than 120 <laughs> megawatts it's it's grossly in, i mean Let's take the franchise of Abuja Electricity, for instance, that, that deals with 600, 700, 800 megawatts. I mean, you are talking of maybe the central business district. Now, take where central business district area in Abuja is significant because of the location, I mean, because of the, 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 the end users that it caters for. But even at that, by the time you remove, by the time you remove the offices and things like that, you find out that it's such a small thing. But that notwithstanding, a major thing that their entrance is supposed to begin to bring about is a reduction in the pressure on the grid itself because this is an off-grid off yes. uh, opportunity mm -hmm. yes. this is an off-grid so it begins to reduce so those who are on the on the grid and they find succor or they find solace with people like mtn mm -hmm. they can be sure of 24 7 and maybe they are paying about 300 naira per per unit because the current the current rate for band a is about how much about 200 something naira 209 209 naira so if mtn now says i can give you 250 i can give you 280 and i will give you 24 7 
Now, it, 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 it is not incumbent on you, the end user, to begin to do electricity management and say, okay, I will take it for eight hours, ten hours in a day because that's what I can afford. So it's, it's not going to be based on your budget, what you budget for every month or every week or every day. But let it also be very clear that one of the things that we are likely to see if we now have a multiplicity of the likes of MTN coming into the market is that the grid pressure will, is expected to drop depending on how much they can generate and the people they can use. I mean, take for instance, if you are dealing with some estates in that Abuja has, that has estate structure, you are dealing with two, three, four, five estates and you are providing electricity for them, providing electricity, they will not be relying on the grid again. So what is available in the grid goes to productive effort, big manufacturing will not be able to take that power. Take Abuja Steel, for instance. I don't know what they will be consuming currently, but assuming that you have MTN in Abuja and MTN is giving 100 and that 100 is made available to Abuja Steel, Abuja Electricity becomes the, I mean, becomes a beneficiary of that opportunity that has been created by MTN. So we are expecting that gradually, it's taking a, it's taking a long time for us to get to this point, but gradually we should be able to get to that point. Now, now back to you, Uket, um, uh, just like you said, when they, when they come in, we're expecting to see like an, a, a little ease, you know, in the, on the national grid. Now, how will this development affect the existing power generation companies and, of course, uh, the broader, you know, energy market? Yes, um, the Jenkos will sit up. There's no doubt about <laughs> it. Where you have competition, Though we are starting at a smaller scale, when I was looking through the that section 165 mm. sub 1M, the current licenses that were issued or awarded to these uh, renewable energy companies and uh, these uh, multinational MTN and the rest, mm. you know, does not permit or allow them to sell that power to the third party. Mm. For instance, Golden Penny mm. in Lagos is awarded 100 megawatts, which has to be distributed, generated by them, and distributed in four locations. Right? Now, uh, the other one in Lagos is in four locations within Lagos, with about 59 I think 56.94 megawatts of electricity. So the populace, the entire uh, customer population will not benefit. But you are taking out this chunk, though small, from what the Jenkos are generating. Now, take a, a, a places like Newe, where I did some work some time ago. And I discovered that Newe industrial clusters, where you have heavy machineries and so forth, the uh, uh, the need the uh, load need of that area at a point was 1450 megawatts just for Newe minus Oka minus Onicha industrial uh, uh, complex just Newe alone now the beauty of this is this and the significance of what has happened here is this unlike when we we had this illegible customer issue that was not really managed properly. Yeah. Now, these entities, and I believe they should scale it up to about 500 megawatts, so that individual companies that can consume, factories that can consume up to, or their load needs is up to 200, 250, 500, can key into it, generate their own energy for their own consumption. That takes the pressure of the Jenkos. Mm. And now, when the Jenkos now generate their own electricity for the distribution companies, mm. I think it will be much easier mm. uh, for the management and control of uh, what is going on there. Mm. Okay, now back to you. Uh, but the, you were talking about the impl implication of, of this. Now, now tell us, what are uh, some of the implications of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, meet. My, my first fear, my first fear is by the time these major companies begin to deal with those who can afford, mm. how many village people 
were not in line with the street lingo because there are two types of village people. I'm mm. not talking about village people <laughs> in terms of the street lingo. Now, in terms of rural areas, rural dwellers, rural dwellers, rural dwellers. Mm. How, many, how, many, how many, because all of them are likely to not be on band A. Yes. How many of them can afford? So now we come to the issue of affordability because if empty, if the, the rule is that they cannot sell to a third party, meaning mm. they are selling to themselves, yes. they are generating and they are consuming it on their own. Yes. And it makes more power available in the grid. Now, that does not necessarily mean that the cost of production will drop. That does not necessarily mean so. So, how many persons can afford the cost of electricity as it is today? I'm saying that up to yesterday, somebody was still saying, can you help me find out whether it is possible for me to move from band A to band B? So, so there is a... That the light is too much. I want exactly. To <laughs> I want to, <laughs> my fridge is beginning to... I mean, my things I keep, it, they are beginning to over... Being over frozen and things <laughs> like that. So, how many... Uh, so, th there is a problem there. So, for me, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. What I would expect should be happening now is more companies should now move to the grid if reliability can be guaranteed. Because there is no way grid supply will be as expensive as a privately generated electricity. Grid mm -hmm. electricity will still be a lot cheaper than what a private generator will do. So that's a, that's a fundamental thing that we need to start and, looking and at. And in terms of the revenues mm -hmm. of the discourse, mm -hmm. you know, these are entities, multinationals, that, they are, that are their major customers. Yes, yes. Most of them rely on you know, the, the income, the revenues coming from these multinational companies. So if MTN that has stations all over the country will pull out, all the discos will be affected. Their revenues will certainly be affected. That is number one implication. Mm -hmm. The second implication is that they have to go, you know, think out, out of the box now to go capture we have about eight, uh, about uh, 85, 80 to 85 million Nigerians, according to the World Bank report, that are not connected to electricity. This will entail the distribution companies, the regulators, and everybody to put on their thinking caps and do what? Go into customer yes. immersion to capture. The spokesman of ANES, Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, mm. sometimes said, uh, when a panel together, he said there were about 25 to 30 million Nigerians using electricity. The former MD of Bini Disco, once in the National Assembly, in the Senate Committee hearing where I made a presentation too, told the world that there were 35 million Nigerians in electricity. But when you now come down to the figures on the data we have with the regulator, the commission now, we are talking of below 15 million as of today. 15 million as of today. So if we have 25, so you still have 10 million that the discos have, they must be compelled to go and capture. So uh, electricity now, accessibility, you know, uh, space will widen, more people will be captured into the net and it will be better for the country. Okay, now, uh, but uh, we are also uh, going to look at the uh, area that is very, very important to this uh, administration. We're talking about the area of uh, job creation. Now, what impact will this move have on local job creation and economic development in areas served by these uh, mini grid? No, I mean, from the word from the word go, electricity has always been a catalyst for socio-economic and even political development. Yes. I mean, where, where you have uh, electricity in the quantity, in the right quantity that you need it, you can run both your day and night economy. Right. So, if the likes of MCN begin to generate their own power, if we begin to have a lot of off-grid uh, availability of power, of course, it means that more jobs will be created. One of the reasons why a lot of people find it difficult to run their private organizations today is because of the budget for electricity. I mean, take for instance, you, you have to run a mini generator or even I better pass my neighbor. And your kind of job is such that you have to run it overnight. 
maximum you cannot do more than six hours and it is not every appliance that you can put on that i better pass my neighbor so if you go a little bit higher you and you know the cost i think up till last week somebody was still telling me that they bought petrol for about 970 naira for a liter mm. i mean aggregate that that's 1000 naira correct how many liters are you going to buy Around. to run Around. your gen overnight so mm. if if we are beginning to get suko from the electricity <laughs> market and a lot of people can now get more electricity from the from the grid it means that employment will be created economic stability will be achieved social problem will reduce and a lot of people will be gainfully employed so for me it's it's a positive for us uh, now uh, let's talk about um, the the area of uh, overseeing you know now uh Uket, in your opinion what measures should be in place to ensure that uh, these uh, uh these uh, multinationals that are entering into this uh, sector now are being over you know they oversee and regulate the operations of these uh, multinationals simple all that the regulator should do mm -hmm. is to play by the rule set yeah that's all the problem we have had in the sector all these years is because of uh, the how do you call it regulatory somersault they come up with this, the next day they are changing it, another day they are changing it. So you have set the rules. Allow them to play by the rules. Don't introduce anything that will create problems. Because now MTN, uh, I did a research some time ago and discovered some companies, some multinational companies, how much they are spending on alternative power. He called yeah, he, he call it generator, mini generator uh, uh, power. And I discovered when I aggregated everything about 16 point something trillion. 16 point something trillion was spent annually. That is, minus you and I and other Nigerians out there with their own. I'm talking of multinational companies. At the end of the day, they are investing. Or this op uh, a window has opened for them to invest this 16 or part of this 16 trillion to generate their own electricity. Now they are taking off pressure from the grid. Like he said, that will imp uh, imply that more jobs will be created as we speak. I know two distribution companies that are highly in need of engineers electrical engineers in specific areas in specific areas and because of what was done in AEDC the level of training some of them so these this these course are poaching mm -hmm. poaching these trained engineers in this so also these uh, multinationals that are coming into the fray we'll they'll, they'll also poach so there will be opportunities for our young men in universities, in electrical engineers, to leave school and find jobs. Uh, now, uh, 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 buddy, just 30 seconds. Mm. Tell us, how can we maximize this opportunity? However you look at it, it's definitely uh, for uh, multinationals to, you know, uh, have a permit. They definitely must have a... I, 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 I think it can never be overemphasized, the need for more multinationals to come into the market. Mm. I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, 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 a picture of a lot of people being put a lot of companies being put under pressure by the cost of petrol and diesel right i mean because when mtn came when they found out uh, or the telcos generally when they found out that grid power was not able to carry their demand they started buying generators yeah, there is no the, station yeah. that you won't find a generator so that they can run 24 7. Right. and those generators ran on diesel on diesel now, so now that cost of diesel and petrol seem to be at par, mm. 
they now need to think outside the box. Yeah. The next set of people that I expect should come into this bargain fully are the investors. Thank you very much. With that, we will wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> to that, we wrap up to this episode of Nigeria Today. A very big thank you to Bode Fadikwe, the electricity and power expert. Thank you so much, Bode, for your thank time you for and contribution. You. And also, we had uh, Uket Ubunga. He's Executive Secretary, Power Consumers Advocates of Nigeria, and National Secretary, Network for Electricity Consumers Advocacy of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your thank time you for and your contribution. Time. And thank you for being part of the program. Don't forget, Nigeria Today is every weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can also check out this episode and others on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. Once again, thank you for watching. I am your carrier, Clinton. Goodbye.